let's go through this one. Let's do one of the two questions as an example. So a piece of metal with that mass is heated pretty hot and then dropped into water. This causes the water's temperature to rise. What's the specific heat capacity of the metal? Of the metal is an important piece of information. We're going to use it to identify the metal as well. So we're going to make sure our box contains both the specific heat capacity of the metal and its identity. Anyway, we know we're going to use Q equals MC delta T because we're talking about energy and there's changes of temperature involved. So we know we're using Q equals MC delta T. Now, Q for the metal, Q is not actually given anywhere in the question, so we need to find Q. M is given right there for the metal. C for the metal, we don't know that because we don't know what metal it is, so we don't know which one to pick off the chart. Delta T, we do know that one, and I'll talk about that in a moment. But we're going to have an issue. We're going to need to find both C and Q for this one. Um, so how are we going to do that? We need to understand something about this. When you take a hot piece of metal, so hot metal, and you drop it into a container of water, the metal might be super hot, but as soon as it hits the water, it's going to be the same temperature as the water when you pull it out. If you haven't seen the video of us talking about that in, in, in the lecture, go ahead and watch the video on our YouTube channel. Now, um, the thing to understand is if the water's temperature rose to this, the metal's temperature dropped from this to this. So both the water and metal are this exact same temperature at the end. So we can figure out delta T for the metal. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take M delta T, divide both sides by that, and we're going to have Q over M delta T in order to get C for the metal. Because we can figure out the mass of the metal, it's right there. The delta T, we can figure it out. It's from this to this temperature. So it drops from 827 to 32, whatever. So that's what the delta T is. We still need to figure out Q, and we'll come back to that in a sec. But our strategy is we're going to identify the specific heat capacity of the metal and then look at the chart and match the specific heat capacity to an identity. So before we can go any further, though, we have the mass. We can figure out the metal's delta T. We got that right now. Um, we need to figure out what we're going to do about this. And actually, maybe I'll, I'll pause that a sec and go back and do the... For the metal, the mass is right here, 8.4 grams. And the delta T is negative because the metal dropped from being really hot to not so hot anymore. So that's 32.6 degrees Celsius minus 827.6 degrees Celsius. And so delta T is negative 795 degrees Celsius for metal. So, okay, that, that's, it's always good to set aside the information we need to, for this, but we still need Q. So we need to understand that the metal, when it lost its energy, it lost it to the water. So energy went from metal to water. So Q of metal is equal to Q of water. However, we need to understand if the metal got colder, look, the water got warmer because every joule lost by the metal was gained by the water, which means if this is negative, this number is going to be positive. If this number is negative, then this number will be positive. If this number is negative, this number will be positive. So they're opposites. So the Q of the metal is the opposite of Q of the water. So we're going to calculate the specific heat capacity of the water, sorry, the energy that the water gained, put a negative sign on it, and that negative number of joules will be the number of joules lost by the metal. And once we can put this Q right here, we'll already have M and delta T, and we can solve for C, look it up on the chart, and identify the metal. Okay, so we got to find how much energy the water gained. Now, so Q equals MC delta T for water. Let's do that. The mass of the water is that. So Q equals 84.5 grams of H2O times specific heat capacity at this temperature range. Water is a liquid. So let's use the liquid specific heat capacity of 4.184 joule per gram degrees Celsius for liquid water. And the delta T for the water. So delta T water is the water got warmer. 
So we'll take the bigger minus the smaller, 32.6 minus 24.1, oops, degrees Celsius, degrees Celsius, and that will allow a positive delta T, which you need for when water warms up. 32.6 minus 24.1 equals 8.5 degrees Celsius, and it's a positive number, so times 8.5 degrees Celsius. Degrees Celsius cancel degrees Celsius, gram cancel gram, joule is the answer. Let's see what that comes out to. 84.5 times 4.184 times 8.5 equals that many joules, 3,005.158 joule absorbed by water. Now, now we need to understand that if this many joules is absorbed by the water, then the exact same number of joules must have been lost by the reaction, by the metal. So, the only way the water gained this many joules is because 3,005.158 joules was lost by metal, which means we're going to say Q metal is negative, negative 3,005.158 joules. Notice it's unrounded because this isn't the final answer. Don't round until the end. I will, however, now be able to take this number and put it into this equation right here. And then this goes here, and this goes here. So for metal, Q over M delta T equals C. So then negative 3,005.158 joules over the mass which is 8.4, 8.4 grams times the delta T, which is negative 795. Sorry, I just realized that whole thing was out of view. Um, okay, so let me just recap. I just realized that was out of view for metal. The formula is that, which means you plug in the numbers. Q equals negative 3,005. M equals 8.4 grams. Delta T equals, uh, let's see, negative 795 degrees Celsius, as shown up there. So then what we can now do is do the math. By the way, negative divided by negative, this will come out to be a positive number, which I sure hope because you cannot get a negative specific heat capacity. So 3,005.158 divided by 8.4 times negative 795. Oops, I forgot to add the negative sign at the beginning. So. It doesn't really change anything, but I'll do it nonetheless just to emphasize the correctness of the, what the procedure should be. So negative cancels negative, you get a positive answer. We'll just say, well, let's round that. Two sig figs, forget that, don't count sig figs of temperature, but this is two sig figs, and this depends on the sig figs that came from it. And in calculating this number, we would have, if we were gonna round it, we would have rounded it to two sig figs. So basically we look at all the numbers that went in, and we've got two two sig fig numbers that went into it. This one and, uh, oh sorry, I would, I'd accidentally said two sig figs here, ignore temperature. So this one would have been rounded to three sig figs. This one, however, is a two sig fig number that went into calculating right here. So we rounded two significant figures, 0 0.45 joule per gram degree Celsius, which is the correct units for specific heat capacity. And we looked that up and that matches iron. So parentheses iron. That's the identity of the metal.